As Hashem is Baruch, we begin the new parak on the Flamites and Aleph, the fourth parak is at the Yuma Parak Tariff Bekalfi, which we continue regarding the order that we were speaking about <coughs> with the base Irim, the Sarla Hashem and the Sarla Zaz, and how we went about deciding which was which. Cheers, Kuz, but because of the Kuz, 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 the the Kuz, the the Kuz, the so what we're discussing today's daf are, like we mentioned, the new parak tariff for Kalfi, which literally means to say that he grabbed in the box, which again is regarding drawing the lots to determine which will be the Sar la Zazel and which will be a Korban Chatzas la Shem, which gets us into a discussion regarding the Arab Shem the Tzaddik, which in his days it always came out to la Shem in contrast to later on. We have Machlikis uh, towards the end of the daf, whether the Geirul is Ma'akiv, and there's different parts of the Geirul, there's the taking out the lottery from the box, and then taking that lottery, putting it on to the animal, and we have a discussion, then in, in the Machlikis Hanoyim, Machlal, what's Ma'akiv on that day of Yom Kippur, and as that relates to specifically the Machlikis of the lottery. So the key terms and concepts are Shimon at Tzadik, Ho'im Mishir Knesset Gdoyla, that he was from the, as we know, Mesef Tzadik says he was from the leftovers of the the Knesset Daila, and the Torah talks about his greatness in contrast to later generations. The Torah is concerned about the, concern the Jewish people's money, as we find by Mitzayir, and make sure you get everything out of the house. And so, to today's daf, it comes up regarding why something was not more expensive because the Torah is concerned about the Jewish people's money. We have Machlekes that comes up today's daf regarding the name Arabi. When we say that the Western lamp had a miracle that happened with it, there's Machlekes if the Menorah itself was from east to west, or if it was, from north to south. And the relevancy is regarding which one do we call the Neymar Rabbi. If you hold that the Neymar Rabbi went from, uh, from east to west, so then it's actually the second <coughs> one is actually the, uh, the, 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 the Neymar Rabbi. The, because it was west after the first one, that made it to Neymar Rabbi. In contrast, if it was, let's say, from, uh, from, from north to south, meaning it was perpendicular to the entrance when you came in, so the Nehmer was actually the middle one, which was the, the, uh, sticking out a little bit more towards the west, and all of the ones on the sides were facing towards that one. That's the, the machlekes regarding what's the Nehmer Rabbi. The, uh, the halacha of the Shnei Kizari Eitzim, which was that even if there's a five in Shemayim, there was the obligation of a coin to bring two logs of wood, and Berchus Kahanim, that they would bless with Hashem's name, but after Shem Tzadik passed away, they stopped saying with Hashem's name. So we begin the current death, Teref Bekalfi. We begin with the new paragraph in the Mishnah as follows. Taraf Bekalfi. Taraf means he grabbed Bekalfi in the box. So, like we said, this is continuing what we said in the previous paragraph. After we said Bekalfi, there was a box over there. We said regarding the praise of one of the people that he upgraded it. So there was this box that they would grab, that the Kohen would grab it. The Hedlash Negrales, and he would take out and it says specifically grab because he wanted to do it, as Umo explained, suddenly without paying it too much attention. And he, had, he, had like and he took out two lotteries, one with his right hand, one with his left hand. And he had the he goats that were standing, one on his right and one on his left. And he put the lottery that came up on his right hand onto the goat on the right and the one on the left onto the one on the left. Echad Kasav Lav Hashem, one of them had the said Lashem on it. The Echad Kasav Lav Hazazel, that one said that it's going Lazazel, that's the one that's going to be sent away all over the cliff. Now, Haskan Minoy, he had the, the deputy Kohen Gadol on his right hand side. Veresh Beis Abbas Maile, he had the head of the court on his left side. Chesed, Vur. Im Shal Shem Ola Bimina, if the, the name of the one that goes for Hashem, which the blood is it's then sprayed on in the Kodesh HaKadoshim inside. So Haskan Minoy, so the Haskan was on his right side, said to the Kohen Gadol, Ishi Kohen Gadol, my master the Kohen Gadol, Hagri Menecha, pick up your right hand, because that's the one, that's the side that has Hashem. Now, maybe she'll shame all of the smile, but if let's say came up on the left side, we were raised by Zabaymele, then the head of the court would tell him, Yishi Kayim Gadol, my master Kayim Gadol, Hagra Smalecha, pick up your left hand. Then says the Mishnah, the son of Shnei Sirim, okay, so he put it on to both he goes, Vaimer, and then he says, regarding the one that's Lashem, he says, Lashem Chatas, that this should be for Hashem as a Chatas. Which is Shmuel Oimer, he disagrees, says, Lohi Tzorch, Lame Chatas, you don't have to say it's Chatas. And Lashem, we know it's a Chatas, if you really know it's Lashem. All you have to say is Lashem. And then, when he would mention Hashem's name, he said Lashem, he said Hashem's name literally, so they, then the people would respond when they hear him say Hashem's name, Baruch Shem, blessed is the name, which refers to the name of Hashem, Kavod Machus, which is the glory of his kingdom, Lailam Vod, forever and ever. So now the Gemara explains what we had said, why this was, as we had said, Lomali Tarf Bakalfi, he said he has to chap, he has to snatch, the box, he has to snatch, 
So the Gemara created the line of so that he shouldn't go ahead and move his hands around to try to understand. You know, those kids are always in there. Okay, grab one. Look, okay, feeling around, which is that, which nash you could grab for. So to, uh, to understand from feeling around, he'll try to figure out which, maybe he could feel his fingers or whatever around by the word. He wants to figure out which is Lashem, the Lishkal, and then he's going to take it with his right hand because, as the Gemara is going to explain, it was a good sign when they came up with his right hand. So we don't want him to go ahead and try to do it because that would defeat the whole purpose of, um, of being a, 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 the lottery as it is. The Yibri said, put your hands in and take it out right away. Now, Amar Rabbi says that Kal Fishal Eitz this box was made out of wood. It was also mundane, meaning it was not sanctified. And it only contained his two hands. It didn't contain anything more than that. Now, that the Gemara says, Maskev lo Ravina. Ravina says, I can understand, I understand that it only contained his two hands. It wasn't bigger than that. The same idea. I said, because if you can move around, you might be able to feel around. You could just stick your two hands in, and that's it. So it makes sense. Now, why are you saying the box was mundane? Nikachu, you should sanctify it. This is a this is a boida in the Bismillah. It says, if that would be the case, I believe Klei Sharis shall eat. It was made out of wood. Then you have a service vessel of wood. Klei Sharis, the Ace left. Then you don't make a service vessel made out of wood. So therefore, it couldn't be Makadish. So then the Gemara says, okay, but then not the Kesem, make it out of silver. But not the Dizam, make it out of gold. Then it'll be worthy, and then you'll be able to be Makadish and make a Klei Sharis. Says the Gemara, no, had Torah chasa on the money shall Yisrael. The Torah is concerned for the money of the Jewish people. I guess it says in the pasuk, may you create down the coin commands, and they clear out the whole house. What's the Torah concerned about by the mitzvah by the house that you have to make sure before they clear your to get all this stuff out? It's the small earthenware vessels that they can't be purified in the mikvah because eh, the other metallic vessels can be purified. <coughs> you don't have to quickly get it out. What are you concerned about for the small earthenware vessel which you cannot purify in the mikvah? So if so, if the church is concerned about even such an insignificant amount of money, for sure a significant amount of money, and if they're concerned about a mitzayru who's a sinner, or whatever the situation is, but it's just a mitzayru for sure, by the moment of tzaddikim, for sure they're concerned, and therefore they said, no, we're not going to make it out of silver, out of gold, if it's not necessary to make it, we, we just won't sanctify it. Now says the Gemara, we're sitting in the Lake of our Mishnah. Okay, then, 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 so therefore, we didn't have to make it, but the regular way that had to be clear charts, and then you can't make another wood. So it's a mistake to look at Our mission is not like the following time. The time like learned the Bryson. But the Ayim Mishmer Blazer, he says it's slightly different. We said that the current God would stick in his right hand and his left hand, and he had the scan on the right side, and he had the right side on the left side. Then we have a different opinion that says has scan, but current God machnis and yod mekalfi. Both the scan and the current God they stuck their right hand into the box. So instead of having the two hands of the current God right and left, you had the right hands of the Kohen Gadol and his deputy stick their hands in. In the initial Kohen Gadol, I never came out with the Kohen Gadol's right hand, Saskan, Oim Eloi, the deputy would tell him, Ishi Kohen Gadol, my master Kohen Gadol, Hag be Yimincha, pick up your right hand. In the initial Kohen Gadol, but if it came up in the, the Lashem, came up in the hand of the, of the Skan, Reish Beis Av, Oim Eloi, the Kohen Gadol, then the head of the court would tell the Kohen Gadol, Dabre Milach, say your word, meaning, say Lashem Chathos, meaning obviously not pick up your right hand because it's the right hand of the scan, but say your word of la shem chatas. Now says the Gemara of the name of Why doesn't he tell the scan to say it? It came up in his right hand. Says the Gemara no kibun doli salik v'yade. Since the la shem did not come up in the right hand of the kohen gadol, and it rather came up in the right hand of the scan, chol shadaite. It would. You see how concerned the Gemara we've had this a few times. Concerned for the for the uh, feelings of the kohen gadol that if he's going to tell the scan. The deputy to, to go ahead and say it, uh, the, so the Kohen Gadol is going to feel bad that he didn't come up in his right hand. So we don't tell him to tell the Skan to say it. It's enough that the Skan is lifting up his right hand, but you go ahead and the Arish Beisab tells the Kohen Gadol, you say, Lashem Chatas. Now, says the Gemara, like, what's Machlik is? Why is it if it's the Kohen Gadol's two hands or the Kohen Gadol's right hand and the Skan's right hand? Says the Gemara, Marisab, who the hell, you mean the Skan, other than the small of the Kohen Gadol? We prefer the right hand of the Skan, although he's not the Kohen Gadol. But it's still the right, the rechta. It's still better than the left hand of the kohen gadol. Well, Marsim, the tan of Amish, they have no kiyadodin, and they're the same. And if they're the same, we'd rather have it with the kohen gadol. Says the Gemara, "Man hai tani the plal like the ladder of Yehuda." Who's the tan of Amish that disagrees with Yehuda? Shabchanin the skanekahanim with the tan of the ladder of Yehuda. Shabchanin the skanekahanim. He says, "Lama skan mi minoy." 
Why do you have this gun from the right hand, from the right side of the Karmgov? Meaning, you see that he disagrees because I'll tell you why this gun's on the right side, so that he can stick his hand in to the box. He's got to be there. But from the question and from the answer of Rebchinitz Kamikam, you see that, no, he's not sticking his hand in. So what's he doing on the right side? We said in the Mishnah that the scan's on the right side, the Rebchinitz is on the left side. What's he doing here? What do you need him for? Well, he says, I'll tell you why. Shanir by Psul B'Kongol, there was something that happens to invalidate the Kongol. Nich Neskan, the Misham B'Shtach, the Neskan, the deputy goes in right then and starts taking over. But as long as nothing invalidating happens to Kongol, the then the Neskan doesn't do any Abayi at all. So you see that he, he's the one, he's the Talib Mishnah, that disagrees with you then and says, Ataka, took Garnish. He's there just as a way to be ready, uh, uh, waiting right behind the Kongol. Whereas according to Rabbi Yehuda, oh, he's there because he has to stick his right hand in. Now, once we introduce this idea of the lottery and the miracle of coming up on the right side, the Gemara tells us that turn up the Brisa. Our bomb Shonish Shimish Shimon Atzabi, the forty years of Shimon Atzabi, who, as we mentioned in the Mishnah, he was from the, the, the leftovers of the uh, as we're talking about regarding this what happened in in, in the Mishnah. So he was from the leftovers of the Shir Knesagdai. All the forty years that he was the Karen Gadol. So the, the lottery always came up on the right side, which was a good omen that Lashem is on the right side. We come to Eila, from that point onwards, Pamim Eil be Min, sometimes it came up on the right side, Pamim Eil Bismal, sometimes we come up on the left side. So too, Baha'i Lashem Shal Zahiris, there was the strip of the red wool that they would tie on the head of the Sarmish Talech, the Higo that they would send off the cliff, that Malbin, that it would always become white on its own, which was a sign that Kaddish Baruch Hu was forgiving of their sins, like it says a passage in Yeshayin, it would say, kashanim. If your sins are like red scarlet, kashel gabinu, they're going to whiten like snow. So that was also, all the years that he was, the Kayin Gadol, always that strip turned white. The Kamehelech, from that point onward, Pama Malvin, sometimes it turned white. Pama Inam Malvin, sometimes it didn't turn white. So the Baha'i Nehemiah Arabi Dailek, the Western lamp, was always lit. Meaning, after all the candles had gone out, even though they started lighting the, the menorah at nighttime from the Neymar Rabbi, they would finish the cleaning in the morning with the Neymar Rabbi, which that's uh, Eidus, it's a testimony that the Divine Presence rests in the Jewish people, and it was always lit. As the Pasuk says, Mechutz l'Parechas Ha'edus. Why is the Parechas is ever to the Kedush HaKadoshim and the Heichel called the Parechas Ha'edus, the curtain of the testimony? So if you want Shabbos, the base and base tells us it's Eidus l'chol ba Yisrael, b'chol ba Yisrael. Testimony of the whole world, the divine presence rests in the Jewish people. And we say, what's the testimony? Yeah, That's the name of Rabbi, which you put in the same amount of oil as all the other ones. And you would start lighting from it. And that's the last one that was there, which, as we said, what's the name of Rabbi? So that's Machleki, Semenachat, and Tzadik, and Beis. If you hold that the seven lamps were, go- were going from east to west, so when you went in, you saw a straight line, meaning facing, it was, it was parallel to the direction you're coming in. So the name of Rabbi was the second one from the east because it was more Western than the first one. And that was the second one that was called Neymar Rabbi. But the one who holds that, it was perpendicular to where he came in. It was horizontal. So then actually, because it was from north to south, then actually the middle one, which was a little bit towards the west, well, that was called Neymar Rabbi. And all the other candles faced towards the middle one, like it says, Alupa Neymar Neira, that was the middle lamp, which Yiru Neira Shal Shiva, that all the other six faced towards that middle one. But be there as it may, that Neymar Rabbi, was always lit. The Kamehelech, after the 40 years of Shemna Tzadik, Palm Dalek, sometimes it was lit, Palm Kava, sometimes it was already extinguished. So, the fire on the pyre, on the Mizbeach, was always, uh, always, always going strong without adding any wood. The Kamehelech didn't have to bring any wood once they had already organized in the morning for the Marocha. Except for the two logs of wood in the evening, which that's an obligation, as we had said in the previous parish. But besides that, they never had to add, and they only did it just to fill the mitzvah of Eitzim. We come here, look, after Shemna Tzadik, Pam Miskabah, something they got stronger. Pam Miskabah, something they didn't get stronger. Allah, you can't even know, Allah, you can't even know, Allah, you can't even know, Allah, did not stop bringing wood for the Marocha the whole entire day because they were bringing some of the Kabbalahs. It was not sufficient. Another miracle in the days of Shemna Tzadik was the Nishtalcha Baracha Ba'aymen. There was blessing in the barley offering on the second day of Pesach, Lechem, and two breads that they had on Shavuos, and the twelve showbreads that they had on the Shulchan. But cold coin should be his eyes, and any coin they got just a piece the size of an olive. Yes, Ochlim Asava. had those who ate and they were half satisfied. The Yesh Ochlim Asava, some who ate and they even had leftovers. And we come to Eilat from that point onwards in the Shtalchem Eirah. 
there was a curse of not being satisfied that was sent into the, <laughs> the barley offering, and the two breads, and the show breads, and every kind, we get just a very small piece, just like a bean, because it was very, they didn't have so much of bounty. And once they saw that it's not satiating, so it's new in Moshe Nesidim, so the discreet ones, the tzaddikim, they pulled their hands back because they said, anyway, it's not going to satisfy. Stop, stop to us, and they, they pulled their hands away. In contrast, again, in the days of Shem Tzaddik, whoever got the size of the bean, they wouldn't pull their hands back because that would actually satisfy them. But in the days afterwards, if he got, he got just the size of the bean, so they pulled their hands back. But the, the, the gluttons, they would grab and they would take, okay, more pieces to go around for me. Now, Maisa Be'ech, there was a story with an individual, he took his portion and his friend's portion. So he carried Naisai, Ben, as he continued to invade, Chamsen, they called him the son of the, of the, the, the robber, I gave him until the day that he died. Which Tais actually, in Oman Alav, asked, he says, what do you mean, there were other guys around him also that's Chap, like him, he said, we said there are many Chapers, why do they call this guy Chamsen more than other people? So he says, two interpretations, either because he Chap from the wrong guy, Chap from, from another Chamsen, from another guy, and it, it, it takes the, the Ben Omnis to say, the best of Chamsen, he called him for the rest of his life, so it depends who you start with. Or another side is that no, that other people weren't so much, but they didn't care, and he was not satisfied. This guy was high, 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 high. Again, he also started with the wrong guy. And he says, you got him, you got him, you got him. So that's why it's called, but uh, there were a lot of kahan that were hopping, because many people weren't eating because it wasn't satiating. Now the Gemara says that, what's this Ben Chamsen? Why do you call it Chamsen? What do you see that's a lotion of Goslin? So I'm a rabbi of Shila. Says Micro, the Pussy can tell him. And the Kai, my God, Paltain of Yad Rasha, saved me from the hand of the wicked. Mikaf me Avel, from the hand of those who distort the Chaimitz and the robber. Rabba Mahachad brings a different Pussy in Yeshaya, Lindu Hatev, learn to do good. Dear Shemishpat Sika, judgment. Ashru Chamitz, strengthen the, the, nig, the Nigza, the one that was robbed, which Ashru Chamitz support the one that was robbed, but after Ashru Chamitz, none support the one who is robbing. So again, you see the word Chamsen refers to a robber. They called that guy who hopped away from other people. They called him a Chamsen. Now, turn around, when the Bryce continued with Shimna Tzadik, Oisis Shon the Shemis by Shimna Tzadik, the year that he passed away, Omala, and he said to them, the Shon is he makes. He says, This year I'm going to die. Omala, they said to him, I'm not there. How do you know? Omala, they said to them, I would encounter an El Tariid, Lavish Lavanim, Vatim Lavanim, he was wearing white, cloaked in white. This Zakin Echad, whoever this was, would come into the Kaid of and he would leave with me. Today I encounter one elderly person. He was dressed in black, cloaked in black. He went in with me, but he didn't come out with me. After the Yom Tiv, he was sick for seven days, and Mason, he passed away. And his brothers, his fellow Kahanim, they stopped doing Bech HaSekahanim with the Shem HaMafurish because, as Rashi says, they weren't worthy anymore after Shana Tzadik passed away. Now, continuing regarding the, the downgrade that happened after uh, the Shana Tzadik passed away and later on the years, Forty years before the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash, for those, for those 40 years of Shemit Tzadik, he was always in the right side. 40 years before the end of the destruction of Chorban, of the Bayashani, the Nebim came up on the right side. And the white string never turned white. And the western lamp was never lit when they came in there to clean up in the morning. And more than this, is that the doors of the Heichel, of the sanctuary, were actually opening up by themselves, which was a sign for the enemy to, to come inside. It's like leaving the door open. It's like you, you're asking for guests to come in. It's like it was an open invitation for the enemies. rebuked the doors of the Heichel. Amalai said to him, Heichel, Heichel, why are you frightening yourself? I know you end up being destroyed. The prophet Zechariah already prophesied that uh, this opening was a sign that the base Megdash is going to be destroyed. As the Pasuk says, Levanan, which refers to the base of Megdash, open up your doors, and the fire will consume your cedar. So in other words, but you don't have to make it more than it's going to be. Stop opening up your doors as a sign of, we, we know that you're going to be destroyed. 
Amar Bitzchel ben Tavle says, "Lo menekra shemay levanim." Why is the Beis Hamikdash called levanim? Shemal ben Avin is saying, "Shall Yisrael because of whitening the sins." The word levanim is also the word of lavan, whitening the sins of the Jewish people. Now, similar Amar of Zutzer bar Tobi says, "Lo menekra shemay yar." Why was the Hegel called a forest? The Chesulik says, "A pasi melachim alav base yar halavanim." The house of the forest of Levanan, which we said Lebanon, Levanan is refers to the base of Migdash. Why was it called a forest? Lemuch has to tell you, Ma'yar Malavlov, just like a forest blossoms, a base of Migdash Malavlov, so too the base of Migdash would also flourish, blossoming. Domer of Hachi says, Bishosh and Banish Lemuch base of Migdash, at the time the Shalomel built the base of Migdash, not the by Komin and Megadim Shaldav. He planted many different delicacies of trees made out of gold. When we seen Paris Bismanim and it actually would produce fruits in its time. The Kimit Shirok Mana Shah's Ben and once the wind blew on those trees, and the rustling, how you nation Parisaim. So then the fruits would actually fall down. Shmaik says a plus him. Yirash Kalavanan period. It rustled like Lavanan, its fruits, and that is the with these uh, Megadim that would just fall down. And from there that's where the Kahanim had Panas from these golden fruits. But once the idol worshippers came into the Hekel, Yavshu, the trees dried up. Shemek said the Pasek, Enachem, Uferach Lavanan Umlu, and the blossom of Lavanan was withered away. Now, but Asa Kadosh Baruch Hu, the God's going to end up bringing it back to us. Shemek said the Pasek, Yeshaya, Peroyach, Tifrach, Besogil, Blossom, I will blossom, I will rejoice. Avgilis Renan, also rejoicing and singing. Kavayt HaLavanan, Itmla, the glory of Lavanan will be given back to us. Mitzvah will have this Migdash with these golden trees. If we go back to the Allah initially said that so the Kayan would be tarp for Kalfa the Kayan God. They would grab the, the two lotteries and he would put on to the two he goats, one on the right side, one on the left, so one Lashem, one Lazazel. Now we have we have a, this that we said that he would say Lashem, so the, the Gemara bring time of in the Brisa. Esther Pa'amim ten times Masku Kayan God Hashem by He would mention God's name ten times that day. What's the ten times? So Gimel Bavida Rishon. There was three by the by the first vidui that he did on his own par that he brought for his family, which he said Ona Hashem Chotasi, Ona Hashem Kaperno, Lefne Hashem Titaru. So he said there in that first vidui that he did on his par, which was for him and his family, he said it three times. Now the Shleish Bavida Rishon. Then he actually came back a second time and he did it for all the Kahanim. He did it again a second video on the same par. Again, he said the same three phrases. On Hashem Chatasi, on Hashem Kapan, and on Hashem So that's six. And Mishlech Mishem Mishtalech. The Sermon Mishtalech also had a video because he didn't have any Shrito, any Kabbalah, Zrika. He was just thrown off the cliff. He did a video there. That's another three because he said the same three verses. And the tenth time, which was actually before them, was the lottery of Hashem Chatas. He said God's name. When they made the lottery, that was the ten times. And it says the Gemara, Hashem, and it actually happened, such a story that the Kohen Gadol said Hashem's name. And the sound went so far that it actually went to, uh, to Yerichai, that it, it's so far they heard his voice. Now, Rabbi Bachon says, Mishlam Yerichai was a store of parasites. Ten parasites, that's how far, which a parasite is four mil. The mill is maybe like two mi- like a, like a, like two miles. I mean, it's pretty far. How um, how far that that means his voice went. Now, similarly, the Gemara says it's here. Plosas haheichel, the hinges of the doors of the heichel. Nishma b'shmoni tchumim shabbos was heard at a distance of eight tchumim of shabbos. So tchumim of shabbos is two thousand amos times eight would be sixteen around sixteen thousand amos. That's how far it was heard. The place actually means a contradiction. It sounds like that they heard it in Yerichai. So this explains that depends. There was how how clear did they hear it, and that's what it would depend. But so but um, that's what it's saying over here that they heard it very clear that it was in hinges, uh, all the way to eight chumen of Shabbos. Isim should be richa the goats in Yericho in Jericho. We're saying how the base of Migdash, the kind of they heard in Yericho, and so too the the goats in Yericho they would sneeze from the smell of the katayrus because it reached over there. Nosham should be Yerichai, Einan, Einan, Tzrichis, Lesbasen, Merech, Keteris. The women in Yerichai did not have to even put on perfume because of the aroma of the Keteris. And Kala should be Yerushalayim, who a Kala, the, the norm is that she puts on a nice amount of perfume. Einan, Tzrichis, Lesbasen, Merech, Keteris. She didn't have to adorn herself, didn't have to put on perfume 
that kala because of the small of the guitars that was there in Yerushalayim. The gear says, Amr Bel Lodza ben Digloi. Says, Izim Hoyu La Abba. My father had goats, Bahari, and the gear says, Michma or Michvar, which is the name of a place. But you must ach as Mirach Hagitarius, they would sneeze from the smell of the guitar. Amr Bechib Al Oven, Amr Bechib Al Shubin Korach. He says, Sachli Zakan Echem. An elder Yid told me, Hamacha Salach to the Shilai. He says, He went to Shilai. Verafti Rech Kitarius says, He smelled the smell of the guitarius, me being Kislev from between the wall. Meaning from the Keturis that was made there all the years when the Mishkan was in Shiloh, you're still able to smell that Keturis smell. Now, the Gemara brings uh, machloikis regarding this goyrul that was done, regarding halachically. Amr Biyame, he says, Ali is goyrul, mitoich kalfi makabas. Drawing the lottery from the box is ma'akib the avoidah, it's integral for the avoidah. Meaning, the goats are not specified, one for La Shem and one for La Zaza, only through the lottery. So there you have to see which one comes up in his right hand, and that will be the Sar La Shem, and which one comes up in his left hand, and that's going to be the Sar La Zaza. I mean, you have to know which is which, because that girl is Ma'akim. But Hanacha, but regarding the placement of the lottery on the Higot, that's in the Ma'akemes, although he said that he would put onto the two Higots, that even if you don't put it on, that's not a problem, it's not ma'akib, because it was already established to be on the right one when you lifted up the ladder with your right hand. So to the left one when you lifted up la zaza. So the aliyah, the picking up the ladder is ma'akib, but the putting it onto the he goat is not ma'akib. Rabbi Yechonam, he says, no, afaliyah in my he says, no, even the placing of the la, the, the doing the lottery up from the box, even that's not ma'akib. So if let's say the coin just says, this one's a chattas and this one's a zazel, it will be established even without the lottery because the, the lottery is not ma'akib, you're just missing the mitzvah. So the machlik is if doing the lottery is ma'akib or not. Now, the, this machlik is will come up in relation to uh, how do we explain this in regards to another machlik is uh, The Gemara later on, the Sama from Ralph brings a machlik is the and the If you change the order of the avaydas, the, the, uh, the avayda, on Yom Kippur has a specific order from the beginning to the end. If let's say you did the, the later one before the earlier one, so we have Machlikis. And Nehemia says, all the order of the Abayidus that were done with big, big Day Lovin. So we know that he would do some with Big Day Lovin, some with Big Day Lovin. So anything that is done with Big Day Lovin, whether it's done inside the Kedush HaKadoshim, or whether it's just in the Heichel, or whether it's outside in the Azara, so it doesn't make a difference. It's going to be Ma'akiv. Because the Pasik says in Pasha Achrei Mais, Chuka. Chuka is a terminology that's a terminology of, of Ikuv, the Ma'akim. That's going on all the Avaidas that were done with the Big Day Lavan. However, Behuda disagrees. And he says that no. The word Chuka was only said regarding the Avaidas that were done with the Big Day Lavan inside the Kedush HaKadoshim. So therefore, the lottery was not done inside the Heichel, it was done outside in the Azar. So now we're going to have a machlekes, we're going to have two different interpretations of this machlekes that we had over here between Reb Yana and Reb Yechanan. If the Hagrola, if the Lari is Ma'akam not, according to that machlekes between Reb Yehuda and Reb Nechem. So it explains the Gemara. I'll leave it Reb Yehuda, according to Reb Yehuda. Dhamma that he says, Dvar Manas and the Big Dilov and Mibachot. Even if it's done with the white linen garments, which was the unique garments that Kangoda would wear for Yom Kippur. But if it was done outside the Azar, Loi Ma'akva, he holds that that's not where it says. Chuka, chuka was only said regarding the light white linen garments that were done inside the, not outside. So the cool element of Pligi. So then obviously no one would disagree. I Meaning even if Yanne would agree that according to Behuda, the lay ma'akva. Obviously the lottery is not ma'akva because it doesn't say chuka on that. So they cannot be disagreeing in his opinion. Everyone would agree according to him that not only is the placement of the lottery on the ego, but even the, the, the taking of the lottery itself is not ma'akim. The ma'akim is specifically a corner of the That he says the word chukka goes on all the avoidance that were done with white linen garments. Now, this lottery was done when the Kohen God was wearing his white linen garments. Oh, okay, so now we can understand the ma'akim. Ma'adam ma'akim, corner of Yana that says that taking out the lottery from the box is ma'akim. That's from the chemin that he says, yes, because it says chukka on any avoidance that was done with the white linen garments, no matter where it was. So even if it was an Azar, it's going to be Ma'akib. That makes sense. Well, Ma'adam Alunak, according to Rebbe says, no, the lottery is not being Ma'akib. I'll tell you, no, Hanamili, when did Rebbe, when did 
uh, Reb Nechemia say that any avoid with the white linen garments, the word chukah is on it to tell it's ma'akim. That's it. It's not avoid. It's an act of service. Hagrolo avoidi. Although it's done with the white linen garments, it's not a service. And therefore, even Reb Nechemia would agree that that is not going to be ma'akim. That's one interpretation. That's one version of machlek is between between Reb Yana and Reb Yechon. Ikidam, and those say a second version. That no, a libu yerem lechem, according to yerem lechem, the that he says that it's ma'akva, when you do any of the services on Yom Kippur with the white linen garments, it's ma'akiv. So, kulam mm-hmm. aloi pligi, the ma'akva, no one's going to disagree. It is even Rabbi Yechon is going to agree that it's going to be ma'akiv, because it says chuka, and on anyone that's one with, done with the, with the big day lovin', and you're doing the big day lovin', so of course the hagrol is going to be ma'akiv. Ki pligi libu yerem lechem, the machlikus was only according to Yehuda, as follows. Man the malay ma'akiv according to Yehuda says not ma'akiv. That's Rabbi Yehuda because it doesn't say chuka. It, it's only the white linen garments that you do inside the heichel. This was done outside in the azar. But man the ma'akiv according to one that says Rabbi Yehuda that says that it's ma'akiv. It's kashani hocha. Here it's different. Why is it going to be ma'akiv? Because the ton of bikra. Because the pasuk repeats this of doing the lottery two times. It says Asha Allah and it says Asha Allah. Trays in the two times. So even though Chukah is not going on this Abayda because it's Bachutz, and according to Yehuda, only what done with him, but still, any time in Kachim we have what's called Shana Lava Kasim, is La'akim, and never repeats it two times, it's telling it's Ma'akim. From the extra Pasuk is whether or not, Hikuva, and therefore that's the second version of that Rabbi Yehuda is, is so either it's in Rabbi or it's in Rabbi Yehuda. And the second version said that it's in Rabbi Yehuda, and the one who says it's not ma'akim makes sense because it's done on the other. So the one who says that it is ma'akim is because ultimately it says Asha Allah two times. So we discuss in today's Da'af and Yumi Da'af Lama Tess, we start in the fourth parak, parak Terf Bakalfi, which literally means say you snatch from the box, as you send the Gemara so that you shouldn't go ahead and try to figure out which is Lashem. And you took out two Gairalas. Now, our Mishnah said that you, the Kangal was taken <coughs> his two hands. According to Rabbi Hud, the Gemara brought that no, actually the Skan and the Kohen Gadol would stick in their right hand. And the Machlika says, which is better? Is the left hand of the Kohen Gadol the same as the right hand of the Skan? That would be the reason why they had this Machlika. And you took out one that was Lashem, one that was Lazazel. Skan would be on the right hand side, which would be on the left side. Or the Machlika is in the Mishnah, if you have to say Lachatas uh, Lashem, or it's just enough to say Lashem. And when they heard him say, because this was one of the ten times that he said the, the God's name, they said, <coughs> Baruch Shem Kibayim Machos Elohim Now he said that this box was made out of wood, was unconsecrated, and it only contained enough for his two hands. Why? So enough for his two hands, like we said, is because that he shouldn't go ahead and try to figure it out. Fine. But why was it made out of chol? Why wasn't it saying, but because it was made out of wood. And you can't make a clear shards out of wood. Well, then why don't you go ahead and upgrade and make it into silver gold? So you can, because the Torah calls them so we don't want them to spend money where they don't have to. We said for 40 years of Shana Tzadik, well, the Kohen Gadol had many different miracles that always happened. The girl always came up on the right side. The white, the, the, the red s- s- uh, string that was put on the, the, the star La Zazel always turned white. The name of Rabbi was always lit. The fire of the Marachah was always going strong. It was a blessing in the Oymish Day, Alech Melech upon him. Even you got a small piece and you were satisfied, maybe even had leftovers. In contrast, from that point onwards, sometimes right, sometimes left, sometimes it was, sometimes not. And the 40 years before the base of was destroyed, it was never. There wasn't any blessing, and it was never coming up on the right side, and it never turned white. We said ten times in that day, Kohen Gadol said Hashem's name. Three times by the first video of his power. Three times by the second video of his power. Three times by the video of the Sarla Zazel. And one time by the Gairul. And his voice was so strong, it was heard even by Yericha. And we said many different things that came to Yericha. The Yericha Gatiris, and all, all other things that happened because of the Yericha Gatiris. Then we had a Machlekes regarding... Mm-hmm. Yeah, are we saying only the Hanach is Nama Akim? That everyone agrees placing it on the Sar is Nama Akim. But the question we have is regarding the Aliyah. Taking out the lottery itself, doing the actual Hagrala is Nama Akim or not? Now we have two versions in which Ta'ana are they disagreeing about? On the one hand, you could say that Machlekes is according to Nechemia. Nechemia says, yeah, Chuka is going on all the big day loving, even that which is Bachutz. So that would make sense according to the one that says that the Hagral is going to mark it. On the other hand, the other town, the other Amar said, no, even though it's done with the white garments on the outside, but it's not an Avaida. So even Reb Nechem would agree, it's not a <clears throat> well, The second version said, no, it's according to Yehuda. 
And the Yehuda holds specifically, it's only big day love and bifnim. So that would make sense according to the one that says that's not going to be ma'akim. Now, what Shah and Demanda Amma who says that it's going to be a ma'akim? That's because here it's different because Shana Bakra, because it says it two times, Asha Allah, Asha Allah, to tell you that Shana Allah Bakasa, la'akim, that's the second version of that the Machlekis is according to Bibi. Thank you for any time for hosting.